Hello everyone, uh, this is Sudhir and uh, today I'm going to talk about how we can build enterprise grid board um, in no time and uh, we're going to see some of the demonstration as well. But before that, let me just start with my introduction. Uh, my name is Sudhir. I work as an Azure developer uh, PMM with Microsoft New Zealand and I've been with Microsoft from past 13 years, plays different role in different um, uh, organization within Microsoft and um, I'm very much passionate about data and AI, how we can actually use these services and provide the insights to our users, right? Um, if you want to connect with me, I have mentioned my social pointers on the slide uh, over the LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to connect with you guys. And if you have any questions uh, you want to ask offline, uh, feel free to drop me a note, right? Uh, apart from working in Microsoft, I've been uh, blogging about uh, data and AI topics. I've written a book on Azure Data Factory, and I have, uh, you know, uh, love to answer people queries on different uh, platforms. So that's all about me and let's go ahead and get started uh, on the today's topic, how we can build the enterprise grade bot in no time. Now we are now all familiar with the t uh, term digital transformation. In fact, Microsoft for many years has been on a digital transformation journey. Many organizations support their digital transformation by heavily investing in technologies. However, the single greatest driver of digital transformation are the people in organization, right? That means uh, folks from all parts of the organization from technical to non-technical. Now, this has been the case at Microsoft and also the trend across the wider industry. Now, empowering the people and their talent is the most powerful way to accelerate the digital transformation, enhance the productivity and deliver the services which the customer requires. Right? Now, as I mentioned earlier, and you must have been guessed that today we're going to talk about bot um, because that's the one of the interface uh, we can actually provide the insights and provide the AI capabilities to the end user. Right. So before we get into Power Virtual Agent, let's go ahead and take a step back because bots is not new into this world, right? Even in the Microsoft, it's not new, right? A uh, long time back, we basically used to have the Microsoft uh, bot framework uh, through which you can actually go ahead and build the, uh, you can build the bot for your end user, right? Now, if you look into the reference architecture that I've mentioned in the slide, uh, you can see uh, on the left hand side, we have the user who can send a request and then we have the bot services, uh, which has been built and deployed onto the Azure by the developers by using the bot framework SDK. And then, you know, behind the scenes, uh, it basically connects it connected with various AI services, right? Because bot itself is in a dotnet program right uh, so it needs to have an intelligence and that's where the lewis the qna maker the azure search or any custom model that you have been built come into the picture right now the story doesn't end there right because you know to build a model you need to have the intelligence or maybe you need to have some data which is available which you want to actually transform and show it to the user or maybe you want to uh create an API layer through which you can directly talk to the database and provide some information through the bot to the user, right? Now, I'm not gonna get into why bot, what is bot is all about. I'm assuming that you're uh, attending my session so you, you have some basic understanding of bot and why the bot is required, right? Now, let's go back and talk about the other services as well. So sometimes you need to have on a, you know, ETL services as well so that you can actually transform the data before you can present to the, uh, to the end user, right? And that's where the ETL services, maybe you written some uh, serverless code or maybe using data factory or maybe you're using logic apps 
connecting to the various sources, maybe doing some transformation and you know, storing the information, right? Now, underneath, uh, you have the logging and the monitoring and reporting uh, capabilities, which is some of the capabilities are there in built in the Azure. And what you have to do is you have to actually stitch these pieces with your services so that you can actually get more insights what's happening in the conversation or maybe if there's any error in your bot you can actually go and look on to the details debug it troubleshoot it uh, and solve the problem now on the top we have the security and the governance that means all the keys information or maybe when you build this bot for your organization you want to make sure that before any request gets served to the people, the user can get authenticated. And that's where the Azure already come into the picture, right? Uh, all the secrets with respect to the database connection strings or certificates, you don't want to store within the application, but rather as in a good practice, you store this information into the Azure key vault, right? And last not the least, it's all about development and deployment, and that's where the Azure DevOps come into the picture because you don't want to take a lot of time, you know, to build these solutions and deploy it onto the cloud. So you want to uh, shorten your life cycle of development, right? And that's where the DevOps come into the picture. You want to automate the entire process rather than, you know, manually moving your code from development to the QA or to the production environment. I know, and that's why we talk about the CI3 pipeline and so on and so forth. So we're not going to get into um into that but now i believe we got an understanding of okay we used to have the bot framework which is fine uh, if you're still working on it there are a lot of capabilities which is baked in uh into the bot which you can leverage right now we have the other kind of audience as well right where we want to provide in a platform where quickly any user be a technical or less technical or non-technical people uh, should be able to build something which can be used by different people in the organization, right? Now, that's where the Microsoft Power Platform come, come into the picture, right? Um, so, to help and empower the people and elevate, uh, you know, elevate the talents, Microsoft combined the capabilities of three services um, into a unique and powerful low-code development platform. Now, while the uh, Power Platform has the capabilities which will impress any seasoned developer, it is designed to be approachable and accessible to those in a best position to identify transformative application, those who work on the front lines of a business. Now, digital transformation means more efficient use of your data to gain insight, which facilitates more intelligence business processes and design making. However, the organization cannot achieve this efficiency with only with the programmers, the data scientists, and the tech professionals because there simply are not enough of them. Now, one of the fund uh, foundational goal of the Power Platform is to empower the limitless potential of the citizen developer who can use these capabilities to unlock insights and develop the processes that would otherwise never surface. So the Power Platform is a singular low-code platform that spans Office 365, Dynamics 365, Azure, and, and a standalone application as well. Right? Now today we are going to get into deep deeper into the uh, I'm sorry deep deeper into the power virtual agents which enables a no code method of creating powerful chatbots for a variety of uh, use cases. Now first let's spend just a moment talking through a very common set of challenges facing organization today, right? Now, as I mentioned, expectation continue. There's steady climb in the number of areas, and that includes the expectation around choice of channels and devices through which they expect to receive services, and the speed and the ease of that experience. Now, but as an organization, add those engagement channels, the collective architecture on the back end can 
become very disconnected and it's difficult to share information or provide consistent experience across channels. More often than not, it simply creates more complexity. And so even as the new channels are made available, service organizations are unable to deliver on the promises of that experience. Now, recent uh, global research shows uh, that the customers attempt to use self-service before trying to contact a human agent and customer use three or more channels to engage and 90 percent of us expect consistency and continuity across that experience nearly 59 percent of the channel are managed in silos now this become even more complicated for a large enterprise organization not only do different lines of business often use siloed application they often have to deal with the legacy applications that have become a part of the technology stack due to the acquisitions. Now, all this combines to create a very fragmented uh, engagement experiences, one that diminishes the customer satisfaction and uh, erodes the reputation of the brand. Okay. Now, why do virtual agents matter over here? Now, the whole story is all about the low code, right? So the Gartner, uh, as per the Gartner report, the 65% of the application development activities in the enterprise will be in the low code category by 2024. So demand for mobile apps is going to grow uh, five x faster than the IT departments can deliver. Um, and there will be new quadrants, as you can see, which is uh, the participant in the race, which has been uh, under fire. OK, now, while it's clear the chatbots can be helpful, there are some hurdles that needs to be addressed. Often chatbots are hard to create and expensive to maintain. There's an uh, impedance between the subject matter experts with the answers. And the developers and the scientists who create the chatbots uh, are useful unless they can integrate with the backend and provide the personalized answers. Now, if these challenges can be addressed, a chatbot can definitely service to expedite an organization's digital transformation. So the power virtual agent addresses these concerns and is designed for uh, for the customer subject matter experts and IT admins and developers as well. Now customers can benefit from power virtual agents because the experience are uh, an enhanced customer experience, which reduces their wait times, offer engagement anytime they need and can answer many basic questions quickly and accurately. Now, subject matter experts uh, can focus greater time of going deeper into their subjects and speed less time addressing the basic customer experience. This ensures that when customers do speak with the subject matter experts, the conversation is of a great value and goes deeper into the subject. Now, IT admins can benefit from the ability to govern and secure the chatbot that are created by Power Virtual Agents. Now, with its ease of use, Power Virtual Agents enable many to quickly create chatbots. It is important that these chatbots are visible and can be administrated centrally when needed, and Power Virtual Agents offer this visibility and control. In fact, the Power Virtual Agents can cover most of the relevant use cases and provide much better ROI compared to the traditional chatbots building. Now, with many applications, uh, we can choose between uh, platform as a service or maybe software as a service approaches when creating a bot solution. So, with Microsoft, you can choose PaaS, SaaS, or maybe you can choose both, right? The As I mentioned, the Microsoft Bot Framework, which is an open source SDK and tooling, uh, which is optimized for the bot developers, and Power Virtual Agent is a no code. A uh, SaaS offering that is optimized for the business experts in the organization. And best of all, because the Power Virtual Agents was built on top of the bot framework, 
you can actually benefit from the non-cliff experience as well. Uh, Power Virtual Agents um, is designed for, for everyone uh, and uh, they can actually get and uh, you know take a uh, greater experience uh, which can help them uh, you know get quickly engage uh, with the bot. Now Power Virtual Agents also accelerate the chatbot building timeline. Um, but combining the skill sets of pro developers and the subject matter experts. Pro developers can provide the essential building blocks for chatbots, which can be used by the SMEs to create the custom conversation, which is enhance the engagement of the audience. Right now, the synergy between the pro developer and the SME is an important attribute of Power Virtual Agents, uh, which helping enhancing the chatbot creation process and also making the process more efficient. All right, so let's just move on. So this is what we uh, talked about so far. Let me just move on to the next slide. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna look into how we can actually build a virtual agents in minutes. Uh, but before we actually go ahead and get into that, uh, let me just give you some uh, information about uh, what underneath it's available for you to actually build uh, the Power Virtual Agent part, right? Now, in your in your CDS environment, you basically uh, get uh, when you go and enable, you know, bot creation in the environment. Uh, you basically get get the topics, right? Uh, so there will be user defined topics, uh, and there will be some system defined. Uh, topics as well. So example of uh, the system defined topics includes your greeting, goodbye, end of the conversation survey, and so on and so forth, right? Um, now with the user topics, uh, it's uh, there are around 25 plus user topics within the bot. Um, and underneath, you know, it has a trigger phrases. That means how the conversation is going to get started. Uh, maybe when I say hi, then, you know, uh, it will basically going to trigger uh, one of the topics that has been there, right? Now, underneath, we can have a pre-built entities. Uh, the platform provides the pre-built entities, for example, you know, the city uh, name or maybe, you know, the money, right? Uh, but if you want, you can actually go and define your own custom ent entities as well. Uh, you can also create the power automate flows, uh, which we'll talk about little later as well, and I'm going to show you a demo. But then if you want to, you know, get data from some of the sources, uh, you can actually leverage the uh, flows in the power uh, apps platform. Uh, or maybe if you have a different bots which are available in the organization, for example, if you have a bot available for HR, for your uh finance department or you know any other department what you can do is now you can convert them as skills uh, and then you can actually go in uh you know integrate those skills with the power virtual agents as well all right so before we go ahead and get into a uh, demo Let's go ahead and uh, look into how we can actually go ahead and uh, create a bot, right? Now, creating a bot is an easy step-by-step -step process, and each chatbot also has a performance analytics to enable a feedback loop, so you can continuously and easily enhance your chatbot to optimize the customer experience. Now, for creating a new uh, virtual agents you can uh, open your virtual agent designer and then you can you know say i'm going to select a new bot so uh, with that let me just go ahead and uh, quickly go on to my 
Power Virtual Agent Designer. So, and as an example, what we're going to do is we're going to take an example of this website uh, through which we are connected today, uh, which is your data platform geeks. And, and you can see, you know, this particular website has a lot of information on it, right? So I'm going to try to create a very basic bot, um, which basically provides some information from this platform, right? But then you can actually, you know, uh, visualize that uh, the approach that I've taken to build that bot, the functionality that I'm covering, right? You can actually go ahead and take that into your organization and build similar bot within the no time. OK, and we're going to have a look. So the first thing is I'm probably going to go uh, onto my Power Virtual Agents uh, framework designer over here, right? I'm at the home. So what I'm going to do is I'll start with the topics. And as I mentioned over here, you can see it basically provides the build topics for me, right? For example, greetings, it's already have all the phrases defined. But if I want to create a new topic, I can actually go ahead and do that as well, right? So for example, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to create a topic where if somebody going to ask me um, what is HR rules, for example, right? Um, and I can actually go ahead and, you know, uh, create a different phrases, right? So for example, uh, if somebody says HR rules, and, that, and instead of giving this weird name over here, we can say this is HR rules, and here we can say what are HR rules, and I can actually go ahead and keep adding that, right? And then I can actually go ahead and get into the canvas. So I'm not going to... Uh, save this and what i'm going to do is i'll say okay i'm going to start the greeting okay so in the greeting it already has the various phrases so i don't need to create the phrases right so as soon as somebody's going to say good afternoon good morning hello hello agent uh it's basically going to trigger this topic right so what this topic is going to do is let's go and have a look so i'll go into the authoring canvas and this is the place where I'm going to design my bot, right? So as you can see, when the trigger gets started, uh, I can just go ahead and delete this, and I can create a node. So if I click on the node, I can ask a question to user. I can call an action, which we'll see uh, later. Um, I can show a message uh, to a user, or I, if I have a multiple topics, I can actually go ahead and jump from one topic to another topic as well, right? And then I can actually go and do the end of the conversation as well. For example, I can end with a survey uh, or I can actually, if I want, I can transfer this entire conversation to an agent as well, which is your uh, human handoff, right? Now, let's say uh, when it gets started, I'm going to put up a message to a user and I'm going to say, hi, I am DPG bot, data platform geek bot and I can answer you a few things about it. Okay. So this is going to be the first message to my user. And then I'm going to say after that, I'm going to ask a question my, to, to my user, right? So probably I'm going to say, uh, what is your name? So I can actually go and then uh, identify what kind of a input it, it's going to be. So I'm going to say it's going to be multiple choice uh, options. So once I select that, I can actually go and then uh, define the different options for the user. Or for now, I can say user entire response. I'm going to take it. OK, now if I'm going to take the user entire response. So if somebody says my name is Sudhir Rawat, then this entire sentence, I'm going to take it into a variable, right? However, uh, what I'm going to do is instead of do that, I'm probably going to use the entities, right? Uh, and I'm going to use one of the built-in entities, which is probably name. I'll select that. And I'm going to store 
this into a variable and I'm going to give this variable name as a person name, for example. OK, uh, you can define a usage. That means whether this variable is going to be available at the topic level or it's going to be available at the bot level. So if you have multiple topics within the bot, uh, this value of the variable can be you know, accessed by different uh, execution from the topics, right? So I just go ahead and close this. I'm going to say. Uh, and I'm going to say. Uh, once I have this information uh, from the user, uh, I'm going to let's say. How my flow next going to be is I'm going to say I'm going to put a message and I'm going to say. Nice to meet you. And now I'm going to use that variable. So I store this uh, username in a person name variable. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to say, let me uh, ask a question. So I'm going to say, OK, uh, I'm going to say, Tell me what you want to know about PPG. Okay, so here uh, I'm going to say I'm going to provide the multiple choice option, and I've already have some of the questions over here, so I'm going to say. Uh, I got the name and then let's say. If somebody asks uh, community started, for example, uh, so I'm going to say the first option is going to be you want to know about how the community gets started. And I'm going to say let's put up this community itself. And the second question probably I'm going to say who started this community, right? Or maybe the organizer or the admin of the community, right? Uh, so probably I'm going to say uh, I want to know about community owner, right? Now, as you can see, as I'm adding the options uh, for the user, you can see at the bottom, it's basically adding a different notes for me, right? Um, and I'm going to say. Uh, how community sustain. Right. Um, and what else I'm going to do and probably I'm going to say. Contact us. Tag DPG, and what else you want to do? Uh, I want to put the all the. I want to know the social channels for data platform geek. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to say. I want to know the social channels. Right. All right. Uh, and next problem I'm going to say is um, how can I learn? Okay, uh, maybe SQL or maybe da data and AI, right? Uh, and one of the ways, obviously, you can join join the communities or maybe you can you know join uh, uh, this conference uh, to learn more, right? Now, uh, once I have this information, and as you can see over here, it adds different nodes, right? So what that means is. Uh, I'm going to have my, let's say, user. I'm going to give the variable name user preference. And I'm going to say if the user preference is equal to community, uh, then probably I'm going to have this answer. And here I'll just click and I'm going to say, add a message and I'm just going to copy and paste that over here. 
right? Uh, if I want to do the formatting, I can actually go and do that. But for now, just go ahead and leave it as it is. And now you can see, um, then the next is who is the community owner? Then probably I'm going to say, uh, let's see, answer. And I'm going to say show a message, and, right? And then um, if it is how community sustain, so the boss is going to answer, it's going to sustain supported by the knowledge partners. So by that, and how can you contact data platform geek? So this is the, uh, let's say show message. And then what are the social channels? I'll just go ahead and copy these uh, different social channels. And I'm going to say over here. So show message. And these are the different social channels. And then uh, how can I learn, right? So uh, then I'm going to if I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh, someone gonna say how can I learn? So probably I'm gonna say uh, okay. Uh, please select what way you want to learn. Okay. So now here uh, before we go ahead and Let's say I'm going to just put it over here uh, an option for now. Let's say test. OK, now so far I have basically created uh, my bot with multiple steps, as you can see over here. Now, before I'm going to design it a little further, let's go ahead and have a look whether we are on the track or not, right? So now from within this uh, framework, I can actually go ahead and save my dialogue. And then I can actually go and click on what it says successfully. So before I actually go and deploy, I can actually go and see how borders work. So when I say hi, now you will see that you know it basically gonna uh, start the dialogue. And on the right hand side, it basically gives me uh, where it actually lands, right? So because you're gonna have multiple topics. So let's see. Okay. Uh, and there you go. And you can see, hey, I'm a DPG board, but can I, I can answer a few things about it. So to start with, what's your name? So I'm going to say, um, no, here are the things. So I'm going to say, my name is Sudhi Rawat. And instead of taking the full sentence, it's just going to take my uh, name itself. So as you can see, it says, nice to meet you, Sudhi Rawat. OK, so tell me what you want to know about uh, what you want to know about the DPG, right? So uh, as you can see, it automatically creates the various button for me. So I can say, OK, I want to know uh, about this community. So I click on the community. And then as you can see, it basically goes back uh, onto the uh, message and on the right hand side, you can actually see whether it's it's working properly or not, right? Um, now, before we go on to the next step, let's go ahead and look on to what else we can do. Okay, so now uh, over here, I'm just gonna let's say I'm gonna ask my user how they want to, you know, uh, what are the way that they want to they want to learn, right? What's your preference, right? Uh, so I'm going to give them three options. So for that, uh, to extract out the entities uh, uh, from a given sentence, I'm going to create a new entity. So I can say create a custom entity. And I've already created a learning entity uh, over here. So if I click on that, you can see um, this is the name of my custom entity. And I can actually create the list of the items so you can see I want to learn through events videos or hands on lab right um, so these are the items and these are the uh, synonyms that I can create so for example if somebody's you're creating a, a custom entity for let's say for a category uh, for a sport 
and somebody says you know they're looking for tracking so instead of uh, tracking uh, tracking they can actually say they want to go on mountaineering right uh, so it's a more or less the same thing right so you want to capture that information so you can actually go ahead and create uh, synonyms as well and if you enable this smart matching it basically tells you know uh, the bot understands the natural language that means if there's a misspelling or grammars uh, it can be able to recognize the word right so let me just close that i've already created that earlier so i'll go back to my topics go back to my greetings and then i'll go on to my canvas and now let's go ahead and okay now instead of giving the multiple choice options i'm going to say uh, i'm going to select the learning okay and here i probably going to add one more condition right because i have three options so or uh, maybe let's add one more because then we're going to have i think events video and hands on that now if the variable i'm going to change the variable name and i'm going to say learning reference okay so now so if the learning uh, preferences equals to through events and then i'm going to say you probably going to look on to this website so i'll just go ahead and copy that website so here are the events from where we get the all the events uh, and i'm going to put a message right to a little friendly so hey uh person name and then i'm going to say you can find events here okay and let's say i'm going to select a variable which is my learning preference again now and if it is equals to through videos so i'm going to add a node and i'm going to say show a message and i'm going to paste it over here this is my person name and you can find videos here so i'm going to change the url of videos as well quickly with that and then i can actually go ahead and create a message for variable okay, let me just select a variable which is my learning preference and which is equal to hands on lab uh, hey person name uh, you can find chart i just to save some time i hope you get the uh, concept over here so i'll just copy this and paste it over here cool uh so let's go ahead and save this and see how it's going to work. So once it's safe, I'll go back over here and I'm going to say hi. Okay, let's say hi. And then just wait it to get triggered. So now it's get triggered and I'm going to say SR. So that's probably my name okay so as you can see it didn't understand so i'm going to say okay let me so that's another example right i mean if you uh, put something which is not on a name so you can see the bot able to understand and we haven't done uh, anything about it automatically uh, take care of that so now once that is to the rawat it basically says okay uh, tell me what you want to know right uh, so I'm going to say, uh, hey, I want to know about um, how can I learn?
Okay. Now as you can see, it says please select a way you want to learn. But as you can see over on the right hand side, we actually miss to add the options for the user, right? And hence we are not getting any information. So that's another example that I want to show you. You know, you can actually do the uh, debugging of your uh, conversation flow on the real in in the real time, right? Um, so while you're developing the bot, you can actually easily look into and debug the flow, right? So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to, once it's saved, I'm going to restart it again, for example. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, let's restart it. And let's start the conversation again. Hi, and then it's going to ask me my name. So I'll just quickly type that. Okay, so say the name. So this is my name. And then it's basically going to ask me the same thing. And I'll say, I want to see how I can learn things. So this is all what we are doing over here is happening in the development environment. Now you can see I'll get all this information over here, right? Um, and the another thing is, uh, let's try one more thing. But before we go there, let me click on, I want to learn through the hands-on lab. And I'll get that URL, right? Now, real quick, I want to show you one more thing. Uh, so let me just go ahead and start and say hi. And I'm going to provide my name. That's my name. And then once I provide that information, uh, I'm going to say I want to learn through videos. All right. So as you can see, uh, it basically goes and uh, how can I learn? It uh, shows only that option, and then it basically goes into that uh, particular node, right? Now, this is good. Uh, so far, so good, right? Now, let's go ahead and uh, add the conversation uh, with the feedback, right? So, for example, if I uh, add a node over here, I can say, okay, once I provide the a link I can actually want to end the conversation. So I'll say go ahead and end with the survey. Okay. And now once I'm done with that, I can actually go ahead and uh, end the conversation with survey, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. And for the second, uh, if you want to learn through the videos, uh, you can actually go ahead and transfer to the agent as well. That's the human handoff that you can do. Uh, for example, I can say, OK, I want to end the conversation, but I want to transfer uh, it to the agent, right? So literally, it's not the ending the conversation, but it's look like the board is not able to answer something, right? Uh, and hence, I need uh, the human intervention over here. So I can say transfer to the agent, and you know I can provide the uh information to the agent so uh, i could say hey uh, uh user person name needs help with learning right now once i provide that uh, all this information will go to uh to the human agent right uh, okay let me just quickly save this and show it to you Hit save and I'm going to say hi. And real quickly, we will get into the first one was approach a name. My name is this. Okay. And then I'm going to say, I want to know how can I learn? And then I want to learn through the events. Right, it goes, and as you can see now, it's going to end the conversation with a survey. So does it answer a question? I'll say, yeah, it answered my question. And then it can ask me to give the uh, 
ratings so i'll just select the rating and click on that and and i can say okay nothing else right and that's the end of the conversation which happens right um uh, again if i restart it if you want to do the transfer uh this to the agent uh we can also look into that and i can say how can i learn and i want to say i want to learn through the video right now as you can see uh, i haven't configured where i want to you know um, post this request right so for example in the development environment i can actually go and look on to the context variable so that means uh, these are the information which is going to go uh, to someone in the organization who's going to act as an agent uh, you know a human agent who's going to talk to the user right so all this information will go but what you have to do is if you want to um, configure that you have to go and setting come to the transfer to the agent and here you actually go and uh, configure your environment where your customer services people are uh, available right and then uh, you know the bot can connect a uh, user and human agent and then they can have a conversation right so i don't have it uh, so i'll just skip this part over here now the another interesting thing over here is uh, let's say i'll start the conversation again and i'm going to say instead of saying something uh, about the flow i'll just go and ask something which is not a part of the flow for example okay so now you can see it doesn't understand so i'll just say uh, i want to know about the learning right and then i can just say i want to through hands on lab right so it's a very guided navigation which is happening and once it's done I, let's say i could say uh, can you sing right now you can see uh, the bot can answer now why it's happening and how is it happening right even let's uh, give another question to the bot so i'm going to say um, uh, where do you live so once i add this let's see how the bot is going to reply back you can see the response i'm a digital so i'm always just here right now remember we haven't done anything in the canvas right uh, so what's happening over here is we have something called a uh, fallback mechanism that we can configure right now in my case uh, what i've did over here is i basically set up a q and a service okay and in the q and a services apart from providing a regular question and answer i have added a personality to that q and a service and then i have configured my power virtual agents to talk to the q and a uh in a scenario where the question is not part of the navigation right so if i go to the system fallback and as you can see uh this fallback is already configured so if i go to the fallback topic over here and i'll be able to show you what's happening over here okay so as you can see it basically i need to configure which i've already did so it's basically uh the flow has been created i've already created a flow i can go back into the flow and you can see here i have created a power automate flow which basically talks to my q and a service and and you know uh, takes the input from power virtual agents talk to my q and a service uh, get the results and again you know pass it back right uh, i can look on to the various metrics over here but then more importantly i will get the final answer which will be you know written back to me right so that's that's the uh, pretty cool way right um, once you have this power automated flow created uh, instead of configuring into your as a system fallback if you want to use it during the conversation that also you can actually go and do that right so it's totally up to you how you want to design your conversation right um, 
The another thing is that I want to uh, show you is the skills part, right? Now, an example over here is, um, let's say um, I'm going to ask, let's go back on to the topic and let's go back to the greeting topics, go to the canvas. And if I go on to the flow over here, Now, with the hands-on lab, after you know, we, uh, we provide uh, uh, the hands-on lab uh, option to the user. Let's say I want to ask, hey, uh, let me uh, add a call and action. And over here, what I'm going to do is, I basically have a bot created which is a weather bot which i've converted as a skill and deployed onto the azure now what i did is i basically gonna connect those skills now the whole idea is if you have a different bots created for an, an organization you can convert them in a skill and create a skills library and then from the canvas you know you can actually go and talk to those uh, skills as well so for example i'm going to talk to the weather forecast over here okay uh, and for example, uh, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you a question. So I'm going to say, I will you weather forecast. Uh, and then I'm going to say, Uh, provide your location. And I'm going to take an example of, you know, let's say I'm in, interested in hands on lab. Um, and let's assume, I mean, we are in a, uh, not in the positions to, you know, to travel internationally or nationally. Uh, let's say, think about that we are able to travel and I want to do the hands on lab in a particular city. And uh, I want to know. Uh, what is the uh, weather forecast of the city before I, you know, uh, plan to travel, right? So here again, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to use the pre-built entity and I'm going to say it is going to be stored in a city variable. And then I'm basically going to call an action and now I'm going to connect to my skills, right? Uh, and I'm going to say weather forecast skill. And it's going to ask me, OK, it basically accept a variable. And I'm going to say that's going to be my city variable. And it's going to predict the summary. And I'm going to say, OK, uh, at the end, I'm going to show the message. And I'm going to say, uh, here is the forecast. Mr. That's going to be person name and then weather forecast will be my. Summary. Right and once it's done, let's go ahead and save this. And once it's done, let's go ahead and reset this. And I'm going to say hi. Here's the year, and then I'm going to choose the option. How can I learn? And I'm going to go to the last option. I want to learn through the hands on lab. So it says, hey, so you can find information over here. So I'll tell you the weather forecast for a location, so I'm sitting in Auckland, so I'm just going to say my location is Auckland. And now it's going to call my skill from my skills library, right? And here's the forecast, Mr. Sudhir, winds subsiding the, the showers, right? So that's the forecast or, yeah. Um, so you can actually, you know, add multiple skills and, you know, uh, connect those skills uh, based on the conversation that 
that's happening between the bot and the user, right? And you also have the fallback mechanism if you want. Uh, anything which bot doesn't understand, uh, you can actually go and you know, uh, put it over there. Now, how you can add the skills is uh, once you have the skills created, um, like you can see over here, I have published and deployed this over the Azure. Um, and as you can see, uh, and once I did with that, I basically actually uh, go on to my skills. And what happens is it basically generates a manifest file for me. So if I go to the skills over into the web skills and look into the view manifest file. So this is my uh, manifest file. Uh, which I deployed. So, for example, if I do it again for you, just for better understanding. So, if I click on the add a new skill, it's going to ask me the skill manifest file. So, I'll just go ahead and provide the skills manifest file over here. Uh, you can actually bing for, you know, how you can actually create and deploy skills. Uh, all these steps will be provided. So, you can just follow those. And Sorry, uh, let's go back and paste it and I go to the next. So it's going to validate my skills by looking into this manifest file. And once it says everything is good, it's basically going to show me uh, which is available uh, yeah, in that particular skills. So at this point of time, because the skills are already there, uh, it's not allowing me to do that. But uh, I hope you get the understanding of it, right? So now you can have multiple skills and then you can uh, add all skills over here. And then once you have it, you can actually go and define the way you want to, uh, you know, uh, make the conversation flow. Now, this is all pretty good. Uh, you know, you can build. Uh, what about the enterprise uh, features, you know, that any organization look for, right? So for example, uh, monitoring or the analytics of it, right? So for example, uh, if I come uh, into the summary page over here, it's basically going to give me information about, uh, you can see about the engagements, how many sessions are happening, what is the engagement rate, uh, engagement over a period of time, and right? If I look into the customer satisfaction, because I uh, some of my conversation are getting over with the service, I can actually look on to the uh, uh, survey metrics over as well, right? I can look at the sessions and billing as well. Um, if I go into the details here, I can add the name of my board. If I want to add a icon, I can go and do that, right? Um, I can actually go and publish this board. Now, if you are actually in a development environment before you configure it and deploy uh, into any of the existing challenge, you can actually go and deploy um, into so as you can see we have the various channels over here so i'll just say i'm going to deploy into the demo website uh, and i'll just copy this and i'm going to say save it and i'm going to paste this over here all right so this is a demo website and you can see here is my part. So again, I'm going to say hi. Yeah, so now you can see it basically gives me uh, different messages over here. Why? Because I haven't uh, published that, right? Uh, it's basically taking all the content which I've created earlier uh, so I need to publish my latest content and now it has been published then I can go into the uh, channel and okay, I'm going to deploy on to the demo website copy this save it yeah, let's have a look now so very easy very convenient for non-tech users as well you know to look into uh, how that's gonna the bot is gonna look like into their website rather than you know creating a website right which which is pretty hard for non-tech people right uh, so now I can have all this information available 
And if everything goes right, I should be able to do the same thing which I did it. So for example, say, how can I learn? And then probably give me all this option. So I'll go back, hands on lab. Okay, and this time I'm gonna say again, Return, which is another city in New Zealand. Uh, probably more or less is gonna be same, but have a look. Yeah, um, and then can you right? So this is just since we added some personality uh, through the Q and A maker, uh, I can actually go to you know, any any questions which is not as a part of the conversation is gonna go over there and we can get the results right. Uh, Cool. Uh, what else we have? Uh, I'll just go ahead and cancel it. Uh, so you can see we have the various channels where you can deploy it, uh, the bot. Um, if I come under the security, uh, I can actually. So for example, if I want to, uh, you know, perform an uh, authentication uh, task within the bot conversation, for example, just want to make sure that the user are from the particular organization. I can actually go and do that as well, right? Um, there are other level of uh, security as well. If you want, you can actually go and configure that as well, right? Now with that, I think pretty much that I have uh, for the today's presentation. Let's go back over here. And I think whatever I have covered into the slides, it's already, we talk about it. Uh, sorry about that. Let's swap it and back to that slide. All right, so I'm going to share all this slide deck with you. Uh, and let me just find Oh, this is okay. Uh, not sure what's happening, but uh, these are some of the resources. Anyhow, I'm gonna uh, put across these slides so you can have a look. If you want to join some of the communities, uh, go ahead and join these communities and you know uh, upskill more yourself uh, on this Power Platform. And these are some of these slides from Data Platform Geeks. Uh, and with that. Uh, Go ahead and share uh, your selfie, the hashtag, your feedbacks. Very important for me uh, to understand uh, what you like, what, what you don't like, and then, you know, uh, if anything which I can improve, uh, happy to do that. Uh, but more important, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with me, and then I'll be more than happy to answer you. So with that, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye.